ISIS are sending their people in here in our homeland. What is important for now is the safety of the civilian. The problem is not about religion, it is a political problem. The Philippines, more than 7,000 islands scattered in the Pacific Ocean. The former Spanish and American colony gained its full independence in 1946. The vast majority of the population is Catholic. But there is a Muslim community in some parts of the South. And various separatist groups have been fighting there for decades. The largest ones have signed peace agreements with the government. But a new militant group overran Marawi, the main city of Mindanao Island, in May. We went to the front line at the peak of the fighting. The battle to recapture Marawi. The target, members of Mauti, a militant group that overran the city after pledging allegiance to Daesh. It was a moment those living here will never forget. Nakablock sila ng t-shirt, tas may may nakakover dito na black, nakas na may sul nakasulat dito na Bismillah, ganon. Tapos may mga barrel sila. Sabi nila sa min, uh, lahat lahat ba nandito na sabi na. The operation to flush the group out is the country's largest in decades, with hundreds of lives lost. Most of the militants confine themselves to the city's southern commercial district. But some were also hiding in cleared areas. The army is saying that there's a sniper very close by and that's why we're not allowed to get any further. They've been going from house to house, flushing out militants, and we're being told about 2,000 people are trapped inside, being held hostage. A few days later, the army managed to capture two militants thought to be Maoti fighters in the area. At the same time, a clean-up operation was going on. Ammunition, grenade launchers and communications equipment, all discovered in one house. Marawi was once a bustling metropolis. Now it's a ghost town. Those who hadn't been captured had fled, many to camps like this one. More than 170,000 people have been displaced. Many have lost loved ones. Inside Marawi, soldiers check every corner of the freed areas. Uh, we're going house to house to clear everything, to look for weapons and uh, uh, if ever there are still uh, people trapped inside the house, for them to be evacuated. The entire island of Mindanao was placed under martial law as soon as the offensive began, with all vehicles coming into Marawi being searched. The government now plans to clear all militant groups inside the country. The Moro Islamic Liberation Front was once one of the largest militant groups in the region. We met its leader who signed a peace agreement with the government three years ago. A former feared armed commander, al Haj Murad Ebrahim, is now seen as a negotiator. And he stands with the government's response to Marawi's attack. This uh, incident in Marawi is really very surprising to everybody. Nobody thought about the group attacking Marawi city. No, uh, the government also have no way ex except to contain the, uh, the uh, armed group. What is important for, for now is uh, this, the safety of the civilians. After the civilians are uh, brought in safe area, then the government can do their own, their, their own uh, uh, mandate to secure, to secure the uh, area from this uh, armed element. The explanation of the government 
to, from the president himself uh, is that he doesn't, he declared uh, martial law in, in the whole of the islands because he doesn't want to spread. We have shared with them the intelligence uh, necessary for them and uh, we do not allow this uh, extremist group to uh, stay in our area, uh, in, in our exact area. Although uh, sometimes they could roam around in some nearby places, but in our camp itself, there, there were no presence of these extremist groups. The conflict in the southern Philippines has been going on for decades with Muslim separatists as well as criminal gangs all active in the region. The two main Muslim groups are the Moro National Liberation Front, or MNLF, and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, or MILF. Both were involved in armed warfare against the Philippine state for years, but they have very different goals. The MNLF, which was founded in 1971, wants an autonomous Muslim state based on secular principles. But the MILF, which was created in 1981 by a breakaway faction of the MNLF, wants a homeland founded on Islamic principles. Despite their differences, experts say the causes behind their rebellion are the same. What happened here is in terms of development uh, overall development, political, economic, social, cultural, the balance tilted towards Christianized part of the Philippines. So uh, Muslim Mindanao was left behind. So you'll see this in, in, in terms of education, in terms of uh, economic growth, in terms of uh, infrastructure. The Philippines government first recognized the plight of the Moro people living in Mindanao and some of the southern islands in 1976 with the signing of the Tripoli Agreement in Libya. Then, in 1989, the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao, or ARMM, was established. This was followed by a peace agreement with the MNLF in 1996. But the MILF didn't sign. It started its own talks with the government in 1997, which led to the signing of a peace deal in 2014. But this time, it's the MNLF that did not sign it, partly because its leadership is too fragmented. Over the years, more radical groups have emerged. Abu Sayyaf has been active in the region since the 1990s. It's been involved in kidnappings and bombings. The group itself is not about uh, Islam, it's not about independence. They have a totally different agenda in their actions. But it also so happens that in order to strengthen themselves, they are exploiting all available issues in pursuit of their own agenda. The conflicts in the southern Philippines have claimed over 150,000 lives and displaced many more over the years. The MILF has still not given up all of its weapons. But its leader thinks peace will prevail. For us, we are really committed because we see that uh, uh, the, the, the implementation of the peace process is the only solution to the problem. We were pushed into having the armed struggle, but uh, frankly, we believe that the negotiation is still the the, the best uh, solution to the problem. Because the problem is not, it's not about religion, it's not about uh, whatever, but it is a political problem. And uh, the uh, political problem could only be solved by a political solution. That is where we are holding now with the statement of the president, his commitment, even before he became, he, he was elected as president, he have already been openly committing to us that once he became, he was elected as president, he will uh, uh, implement the agreement, he will pass the basic law, and uh, he will, he will uh, 
uh, establish the Bangsamoro government, uh, which shall serve also as a template for the federalism he want to be implemented in the entire country. Recently, new armed groups have emerged in the southern Philippines. The Maute and Bangsamoro Islamic Freedom Fighters, or BIFF, have pledged allegiance to Daesh. They've been condemned by the MNLF and the MILF, as well as the Philippines government. None of them have been included in any peace deal. But as the peace process has yet to be implemented, some people are tempted to join these groups. There are lots of frustration uh, for the past uh, past days and uh, past uh, even past years because of the uh, situation of the peace process, wherein it took too long to uh, move forward to succeed. So this is being capitalized by this uh, extremist group to uh, convince young people uh, to join them, but uh, the majority is still with the, with the organization. There were also already fighters, foreign fighters, joining the struggle of the Moro people. But at that time, they were not organized. They are just joining. But this time, we feel that uh, it is already the organization the ISIS that are sending their people in here to join the fighting. And uh, this is really uh, worth uh, to be very concerned about. Because we know that uh, what happened in the Middle East is uh, a terrible happening and we, we do not want it to happen also here in, in, our, in our homeland. And uh, we share the concern of the government and the concern of uh, the people that uh, about this penetration of ISIS. Murad Ibrahim is not willing to give up his fight for peace, and he believes the international community is key to its success. The international contact group is composed of uh, four countries, four states. One is Turkey, Saudi Arabia, uh, United Kingdom, and Japan. So these four countries have uh, played very important role in, in ensuring that uh, the peace process will move forward. We want to sustain it, strengthen it in order that uh, we are assured that the agreement will be implemented. Uh, we have a committee now uh, handling the, the commissioning process. Uh, it is headed by a uh, representative of Turkey. And, uh, but the decommissioning will be uh, parallel and commensurate to the political process. But after decades of war, the emergence of new groups linked to Daesh might make the prospect for peace more difficult. Shamim Chowdhury, TRT World in the Southern Philippines.